Okay, so I already, if you saw the BTE one, you know the process for cleaning. So I've already done that with these. Now look a little bit closer. These are receiver and the canal hearing aids. And receiver and the canal hearing aids come in two basic types. They come in the ear mold type and they come in a dome type. Now, some ear molds can come off, some of them can't. The way you know if the ear molds can come off or not is by looking. See how this is fully faced? This does not disconnect. Don't yank on it, right? If it's the dome type, and yes, I'm touching things and going back. This is getting thrown away. The domes, these come off, and every time a hearing aid comes in, you pull it off by using a wipe or an alcohol wipe like you know what I'm talking about alcohol prep pads because when you grab it you kind of need to dig in with your thumbnail never do that with a bare thumbnail because how are you gonna get that earwax out of your thumb how you can't so when it's attached to something you would take a wipe and grasp it firmly to yank it that way right? That's the dome kind. You have to pull those off to replace them and also to get to this wax basket. So, when you're looking at these, you'll notice that this end has a little white basket in it and also a little vent hole and then the wire. And then there's a microphone hole on this one, and that's a microphone. This, as opposed to the other one, the microphone cover does not come off. It's also a button. But microphone, microphone, they'll need to be vacuumed. You can't replace that. So, with clean hands and whatnot, you think, well, what parts do I need? The only part this particular one needs is the wax basket. So, you pull a thing of wrong ones. You pull a thing of wax baskets out. And you use your fingers to pull a stick out and pull a stick out. And we still have clean hands, remember, so I can put this back. So that's out. I'm going to ponder and think, do I need to grab anything else? No, I think I'm okay, right? So if you look at this stick, you'll notice there's a new basket on one end and a blank tool end. I don't know if that's picking up, but it's like a barb and you literally just shove it straight in and pull it straight out. Okay. Set the stick down. And I'm gonna hold this up for a second. So let's say you've set that stick down, you go away, come back, and now you don't remember which one has a used one, which one has a new one. The side that has the new one is actually rounded and it has no barbs. The side that has the barb actually has barbs on the side and it's flat. So, I don't, there we go. I think you can oh. see that. So, of course, we wouldn't use that again if that were <laughs> with the patient, but I wanted to show y'all. So, we pulled the basket out. Then, you, I can probably do this one with here. You start at one end or the other. So, so this one is the battery end first I'm going to do gently and you always want the i didn't really talk about this on the other one but you always want the needle pointing up because gravity is our friend if you're doing this it's going to struggle to pick up so it's awkward but you want a vacuum like this and normally i would be closer i'm kind of out so we can video it and then i tilt it and you can really feel in here when it stops sucking bits up Get it where with something, and you'll see this too. You see this this ball? If it's suctioning flat against something and it's stuffed, you're gonna see that that ball doesn't not when have you're any upside movement. down. Well, that's true. But if you are up here, yeah, it it pulls that ball. So we've got that, and then gently, gently. 
under the spot where the wax basket is, you vacuum. And you think, oh, well it has that filter. What do I need that for? Have you ever opened your window and it has a screen, but you look and there's dead bugs on there? That's because the filter isn't perfect. So gravity being your friend, gently, gently. And some patients that'll be way worse than others, mm -hmm. uh, but you never want to dig in because that again is your actual receiver port. So your sound's coming from there and you can damage that. And then this is a vent hole. It goes all the way through. You want to strategery. I know it's my favorite made up word. It's excellent, right? Um, you want to be strategic. That's the proper one. Um, and suction from where the wax is closest if possible. Don't try and suck the wax all the way back this way. Start from where it's close. And usually that of course is going to be on the side that's gone into the ear. Now not always, but for the most part that's Depends usually Depends on how true. they clean. Now did you hear that change? It stopped up. It stopped up. So sometimes you just wipe it with your wipe, fold it, fold it, don't have that out, right? And it pulls it off. Yep, changes the pitch back to a lower tone. So if you hear it go to a higher pitch and stay there, you're probably and, stuffed up. And if you didn't notice that, I'm not touching my ear. People used to think I was touching my ear. I'm literally pulling it up to listen for the whistle. Where's your microphone at? I have honestly no idea. Oh, I can hear it there. Yeah. Hopefully y'all heard that. So you can literally hear it suctioning or you can suction and hear it not touching it to my ear. Right. That, I, I, I hate to harp on it, but apparently that was a thing one year. They really thought I was touching it to my ear. Sometimes those uh, vents are really curvy because the person's ear is really curvy and it may be more difficult for you to suction. In those cases, you can use a vent cleaner, but if we're going to use those, we probably need to uh, use the kind that are going to be cleanable, like the plastic filaments. Or you'll have to throw them away. Or throw them away. Um, you can use a bit of fishing line, too. That works. Bridge, floss, or actual um, pipe cleaners, if it's big enough. Yeah. And that doesn't happen too often, but there are cases where you have somebody who's just got a really sharp bend, and so does the... Uh, your mold and, and if it's you're worried to before suction. switching to a microphone you can always come back and wipe this off in case there's any bits and bobs it doesn't hurt anything you notice it was inside the fold and that's actually why I personally always start from top down because usually the bottom parts in your ear molds are nastier but that's not always true <laughs> especially if your patient uses a lot of hairspray or makeup mm -hmm. that can be pretty nasty itself so and I did sometimes I do the vent first sometimes I do the receiver first it depends on which one looks dirtiest so sometimes people's receivers are super clean looking and the vent is not and sometimes it's the other way around now see some of this crud just came over it's out it's out we don't need to like do we can literally wipe that off instead of trying to suction and again and block it up yeah because it's already out i can reach it there are different sizes of um yes tips. needles too but 99 times out of 100 it's going to be this oh and that's the other thing this, this one has vacuum and pressure we can talk about that a little bit so I use pressure quite a lot under normal circumstances. Um, we're not really sure about whether COVID lives in earwax. We have seen some literature that seems to indicate in if they end up with like a middle ear infection and it perfs or perforates and you have drainage, that purulent drainage, you'll hear more of my, my, my lecture about that, purulent, it's important, it's not pussy, um, purulent drainage. Um, <laughs> Might, it might hold COVID. So then if you're using a blower and it goes up, it's a problem. Um, but they have actual pressure. The, um, and I will say the other good thing about pressure is if you've got something you stuck. See done? Uh, if so, you've got something stuck in there and your your thing is clogged up, sometimes turning it to pressure will push it out as well. But well, you just want to make sure. Well, and these are two sure. different ones. Um, so if you're going to use pressure, 
put the end that's going to be out, embed it in either an alcohol um, thing or a cloth, put it in something, and then use the pressure so that it's not blowing it in. And that's not just for COVID. This is what I say all the time. I'm just saying be cautious. So sometimes that works for the vent. Sometimes if you're out of needles, you can take the needle off, switch it to the pressure. Again, put the needle in something or put it in a trash can. Don't just, all, definitely don't face it towards your eye, a real thing somebody did. Just be careful with that. So we're all cleaned, right? We can switch and again, the fat thing and it pushes in. Remember that rounded side with no barb is the side you're gonna put in, that's the new one. And then we put the battery back in. Same on this other one. And we handled the listening check just the same way as we did the BTE. And clean up. So, so all the same way. I think we're That's it. good. Mm-hmm.